Hello, this is Hans Forschner with Navcon Engineering. A short introduction into indoor noise modeling with SoundPlan version 7.4. I have a small project with a transformer building with three transformers inside. And uh, we want to see how to prepare the sources, how to prepare the building and the room absorption or the interior and exterior sources or surfaces. And uh, we start off with uh, the geodatabase. Here in the geodatabase, I have a situation that has uh, the a transformer building. So we have a transformer building and uh, adjacent control room. So one of the uh, calculations will actually do uh, predicting the levels inside the transformer room, finding out the levels on the uh, wall between control room and uh, transformer room and then radiating noise into the control room. So let me open this up. So here we have the uh, geometry. The uh, buildings or the interiors for the indoor model are uh, using the object industrial building. So on the sources we'll find here the industrial building. The outline of the building uh, has to be at a minimum three sides, but it can be a polylon with any number of coordinates. Um, we are defining the outline and the height of the building. After we do the initial uh, input, again we have the outline plus uh, whatever elevation, either relative or absolute, and we have this building and let me open up the object properties of the building. So here we see the industrial building properties. In general, the very first uh, round of uh, defining the geometry uh, will just show this one tab, so building height and reflection loss. So we, this building is five meter in height, one dB reflection loss. This reflection loss is for the exterior noise model. The five meter defines the uh, building height. Uh, the building is used as an obstacle for generic environmental noise modeling, any sources outside where the line of sight is broken through the building, uh, the building uh, acts as a barrier, the noise needs to go over and around the building. Then we have uh, additional tabs. Um, if you just have the industrial uh, module, then you have the second tab that allows you to define sources on the building. The sources can be point, line, and area sources. And in addition, you can also just define the facades, each of the facades or the roof as a source. So here we can start off with uh, the first facade. This little pictogram shows us that we are on the south side of the facade. Um, by right-clicking on any of the facades, we can define that the facade as a source. So the complete outline of that facade will be defined as an area source. This has been done for this first facade. This is this one here. So here we have a side view of this facade. Inside that facade, we have uh, a door and a window included. So these are additional sources that were um, entered with this icon, this area icon, and then you basically drag an area in that facade, uh, dragging areas always from the top left to bottom right. And then here we can also just change the coordinates of that area if you like. So here it added these two additional area sources. With the delete button I can delete them. Now for each of these area sources we have different options of uh, characterizing the source. So here is a pull down menu. Uh, LW stands for just the power level. So here we would have just uh, in the table below just one line and we would assign a library definition uh, right here of a sound power level of that source that could be for an area a intensity level or the sound power for the entire area. So if you have a, um, a louver, an acoustic louver that has a fan behind it, you can put in the uh, sound power level of the fan for example. If you have a point source on the outside of the building, you can just put the sound power level of that point source, a fan, exhaust, or whatever on that point source. The uh, second option here, L prime W, stands for intensity or sound uh, power per square meter. 
Uh, this can be uh, basically calculated with a given interior level. The interior level has the, uh, um, the index Li, so a level in interior. And uh, so we can just, from a planning standpoint, just say this transformer building has an interior level of 80 decibels or 85 decibels or 90 decibels with whatever spectrum. Uh, then the program will just use that interior level uh, correct for the room uh, constant, the CD, and the transmission loss from inside to outside. And then we will have a intensity, uh, some power prime um, intensity level on the outside of the building. Uh, in this case, we actually will do an interior noise model. So we use the, the third option here, L prime W. And this is the Li calc uh, plus CD, again the room correction, minus the transmission loss. The room correction, um, again, depends on how absorptive the room is. The more absorptive the uh, correction is, uh, tends to go to zero. So very highly absorptive is zero. Very reverberant room will get a correction of up to six decibels. So minus six is the highest correction there. It is recommended by the standard. Uh, the standard I'm referring to is the VDI 3760. So down here we have, so this is already um, a interior level that was predicted earlier. I'll go over the calculation. So um, it uses the interior sources, the interior absorption, and calculates the level on the inside of this facade. In this case here, this would be the uh, facade south wall from this entire facade. If we are in the door, then it will set a receptor in the center of the door, calculates the interior noise levels. That's uh, this, this row here. Uh, it looks at the correction. And then um, in this case, the transmission loss is zero. So this door is open. And then it calculates the uh, transmission loss through the door with whatever room correction. If we have the, the window, so here we have the TL of the window. So these are the ways of how you can define uh, sources. And um, so here we have multiple sources defined, the north side, uh, and then also the roof. The roof is currently not defined. So let me show you that define facade is roof. And then here we could set up that this would be, for example, a corrugated steel with some insulation. And uh, so here again, it would calculate the interior noise level this is, hasn't been calculated, so this is a library element that will have that information. And uh, then it calculates the exterior sound power level on the outside. Uh, in terms of this library definition, uh, this library definition will, uh, will set a, um, a, a source inside uh, that library, um, or source spectrum. That source spectrum uh, will uh, have source data for every hour of the day. So if you have any changes in terms of your source characterization inside the room because it's only operating daytime or evening hours or it's a two-shift operation with a couple hours of downtime, you will have the uh, interior noise levels for every hour of the day. And with that, also the exterior noise levels for every hour of the day. So this is uh, the combination of industrial building and exterior noise modeling and uh, interior noise modeling. For the interior noise modeling, we have to define the interior absorption. So here we have two tabs at the bottom, a general tab, and then uh, all the uh, absorption areas inside the room from the floor, the facades, and the roof. And then here on the general, we have the average uh, room height, in this case would be five meters, the density of uh, scattering objects, so what is the absorption of the scattering objects. This parameter is not really that critical uh, for small rooms, um, mostly it affects the uh, propagation in large uh, scale warehouses that are maybe 100 meter, 50, 100 meter, 200 meters long and relatively flat, there are the additional scattering objects, shelving, tables, uh, any kind of objects inside the building uh, adds additional mitigation on the propagation. And then here we have a default for the uh, spectrum. What are the walls made out of? And here we can apply that for all the walls that has been done earlier. 
And then here on the absorption areas here we can go for each of these um, facades and assign different absorption coefficients here. Uh, the wall, the uh, ground and the facades had all been uh, defined with concrete and the roof with uh, an absorptive uh, treatment. The fourth tab is a tab where we can put in interior walls. Uh, so here we can have the interior walls. We can uh, add an additional interior walls just by um, putting in lines. Uh, let me delete those two and show you on this one. Um, so here we can uh, go to these points and then also modify them if you like to. So here are the coordinates and uh, we can define the distance to the floor and the distance to the ceiling. So if you have a wall that doesn't go all the way to the ceiling you can basically suspend that and then we have a path over the wall. Uh, down here we have uh, the absorption spectrum on each side. Uh, right and left is defined by the input direction of the first point to the second point. And then uh, with that, you know, uh, so in this case, this is first point, second point. So here is the right side and here is the left side. So this is all in terms of the room definition. And then, of course, we have to have the source uh, and receivers. So here we have um, the area sources right here. So just the same as uh, our exterior noise uh, sources. We have to have a name, a spectrum, a sound power level. And so I don't want to go into detail here. Um, the only thing I want to uh, mention here, these are specific interior indoor point line and area sources that we are using for the indoor model. Then in terms of the um, second room here, the control room, there we have a, um, a second, uh, uh, basically a building, uh, again defined with the absorption and so forth. And then here we have also an indoor area source. Now this indoor area source is basically used uh, using the interior model that we will have later for this room. And we subtract the sound transmission. So here if I look at the library, so here I have already done that. So this is the spectrum. This is the interior level that we'll get for the other room. We have the transmission loss, the correction. And then with that, we have the intensity level on the side of the control room. And this will be used to radiate into this control room right next to it. Okay, so let me exit out of the geodatabase and uh, we'll talk about the uh, calculation. So here is the calculation uh, parameters. Um, I'm filtering, uh, I'm only looking at the ones that we will run. So here with the filter, we can reduce uh, the number of uh, calculations we are seeing. So the first one is a haul out calculation. So this will calculate the levels inside the um, transformer room on the inside of the facades and uh, any insides of area sources that we defined like the doors and windows. Uh, we have um, here the uh, geofile uh, that has all that information. We have some indoor parameter calculations, the tolerance, uh, and the uh, frequency weighting. The next calculation is a grid noise map. Uh, so here we have a grid noise map, and in this case I uh, set it up with a half a meter grid because it's a relatively small room. And um, in this case I just want to speed up the processing and I'll change the uh, indoor parameter of the tolerance to 2. And the third one is the same for the control room. So we can uh, go to the graphics and run the model. So this is the first one. So these were the points inside the room. The data is saved in the library. And here we have the second calculation. So here we see the interior uh, area sources, the interior room uh, walls, and the point source uh, right here in the top left. So this is the first room. And then we have the second room right here. So this is calculation finished. Let me close this and I go into the graphics. We update the results. And uh, the only thing I need to do is I need to uh, change the output of the industrial building. That is. Um, 
every source and so here we have the um, the data the result data so we have here the industrial building on the uh, left that is the transformer building with the three transformers the two barriers inside or two walls inside uh, we have a receptor right here a source right here and then here we have the adjacent control room with an area source on the inside that is radiating into the room. This concludes um, the um, introduction in the indoor noise modeling in sound plan. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to contact me. Thank you.